combination of sensors that would allow you and your interactions with the device to become your authentication. Your keystroke patterns, not what you type, but how you type. Your patterns of speaking, not what you say, but how you say it. This combination with local only processing might provide not only stronger security guarantees, but do so completely passively. And not as a binary, single yes, no score, but as a continuum of trust. This next frontier of authentication moves the burdens of pins and passwords from the user to the device itself, thereby trading human cycles for machine cycles. Now, might we use advances in machine learning to ensure that only you can access your security sensitive information? And do we have proof points that would lead us to believe it's even possible? We saw promising results from individual research labs across the globe, single modalities like gate and keystroke patterns, but none even as secure as a four digit PIN, and mostly demonstrated on small laboratory scale data sets. We hypothesized, however, that if they were sufficiently independent, they might combine to offer authentication better than fingerprints or even passwords. To solve for multimodal authentication, though, we needed an interdisciplinary research team recruited from 13 universities and a large comprehensive data set for them to work on. Now, ATAP exists at the intersection between a driving application and ambitious science, and Deepak Chandra's project, Project Abacus, has illustrated the benefit of this commitment over the last year. We needed the ability to get our partners in universities in to work with us faster than the typical nine to 12 months. So in June of 2013, we signed a multi-university research agreement with eight of the country's top universities. Last year at IO, that eight had turned into 16. This year, 16 is 33, including international universities. We can now partner with any one of them in less than 30 days, and we did. A team of 25 experts from 16 institutions traveled from 10 countries to facilitate the cross-pollination of ideas. They joined us in Mountain View for a 90-day intensive research sprint. Our data set was built from 1,500 data donors who signed up to contribute their smartphone sensor information. By the end of the study, we had created a 40 terabyte research data set, as far as we know, the largest of its kind. And we assembled 360 cores across three clusters, pulled all of the power from the first floor, and dropped power from the second. <laughs> the result? Proof of the hypothesis. A new method of authentication that may prove to be tenfold more secure than the best fingerprint sensors. With only a software update, the hope is that we can provide this level of security to millions of Android devices. And we want to move beyond phone unlock to allow an application's authentication needs to be individually met using a system-wide API. The result might look something like this. Throughout your day, a continuous trust score, running while you type, walk, browse, not what you do, but how you do it, to allow access to a game which might require little or no authentication, or a banking app which might require much more. An authentication system that accepts you and rejects imposters in real time on device. Now on the right side of the screen, you see two of our researchers, Hong Tai from Columbia University and Suji from the University of Illinois. They are using a research debug interface to show you how the system might detect an imposter through differences in typing patterns and other signals. Now these results are hot off the sprint. So we're continuing development and hope that in the future, from high security to low security, developers and users will choose. Now, 
better authentication is only part of the better security story here. Project Vault is a hardware and software isolated environment in the form of a micro SD card. It can be used from mobile to desktop to the Internet of Things. Mudge and his team have jammed a security dedicated computer into a micro SD card with a simple driver free interface and a suite of encryption primitives. Project Vault will enable secure communications and storage, initially for enterprises, eventually for individuals too. As our smartphones have become more capable, the code that runs them does too. Large code bases made by humans have errors. Errors may be exploited to place some of our most important information at risk, like encryption keys, sensitive documents, or the sensor parameters that I just mentioned. There's an inherent tension between the desire to create capability and the ability to secure the very code that drives those capabilities. Think of it like this. My home has windows and doors, a porous boundary, which is necessary for people and things to come and go. But those windows and doors make it harder for me to protect everything in the house. So I use a vault to store the most sensitive documents. It cannot store all of the contents of my house, but it can store my most precious possessions. Project Vault is your digital mobile safe. Big security, small package. Now Mudge formerly led the loft. That was the hacker group that in 1998 famously testified to the Senate that they could shut down the internet in 30 minutes. He was the original author of Loftcrack, the password cracking software that drove operating system security for years thereafter. And Project Vault is his program, Mudge. Thanks. So Project Vault is a small micro SD form factor device. It's a separate, ultra-secure mini-computer. You plug it into any system that has a micro SD card slot or an SD card slot and make use of the suite of cryptographic services to manage your data needs, from encrypting data at rest to encrypting streaming and dead communications like messaging, voice, and video. Only you can unlock it, and any information and the algorithms inside Project Vault are never exposed to the system that you plug it into. So the question is, why build this, and why a micro SD form factor? It turns out you already have security elements in your phones and your computers. SIM cards, they protect the things that are important to the carriers. Trusted platform modules, or TPMs, they protect the things that are important to the OEMs and the content providers. These are services with very low bandwidth, a few bits per second, and with minimal storage measured in the order of kilobytes. So, where's the security element that protects the things that are important to you? That you have complete control over? So we made one. 